Welcome to this full flight tutorial for the Inibuilds A350 for MSFS 2020 and 24. This flight is from a runway start with engines on. A cold and dark start tutorial will be available on the channel later. This tutorial is valid for MSFS 2020 and 24 as the plane is functionally identical between the two sims. We're using 2020 for this video just because the simulator is less buggy. So jumping inside the flight deck from a runway start, the engine should be on, but if for some reason it's bugged out and they're not, you can just use the standard MSFS control E shortcut and the engines will fire up ready for your flight. As I say, cold and dark start tutorial will follow later, but for now I just want to provide a very simple runway to runway full flight tutorial so you can get flying and enjoy this airplane straight away. So before you fly, I'd recommend using the simulator's world map to identify your departure runway, arrival runway, your departure SID, and the approach you want to take at your destination airport. I have world map guides for both simulators linked in the description below. Our first step is head to the FMC's initialize page and enter our departure and arrival airports. Flying our usual test route of Stansted to Glasgow today. Before we continue, I'll very quickly hit clear info to clear out those messages at the bottom left over from our startup. We'll now enter the cruising flight level. We're going to go flight level 260 or 26,000 feet for this short domestic flight. Be sure to pick a cruising altitude that's appropriate for the length of route that you're flying. With the basics entered, we're now going to head over to the flight plan page on the FMC. So we need to pick our departure from Stansted, so we're going to click on Stansted, Departure, pick our departure runway, we're currently on runway 04, we're going to take the SID Barkway to Sierra. We'll now hit Temporary Flight Plan, we'll hit Insert Temporary, and that will commit our departure to the flight plan. We'll do the same thing for Glasgow, so we'll click on our Arrival Airport, click Arrival, enter our desired arrival runway, so that's 05. I want to take the ILS for runway 05. I'm not taking a star today, so we'll hit temporary flight plan, insert temporary, and that commits our SID and our star to the flight plan. We've got a discontinuity or a gap in our plan. Click on it, click delete, click insert temporary, and we now have a continuous flight plan all the way from our departure runway to our arrival runway. A very quick and important side note if you're trying to replicate the route I'm flying. If you're not, you can skip to the next timestamp. So there's currently a small bug in the nav data where if you pick Barkway 2 Sierra out of Stansted, it picks the wrong Barkway waypoint. It picks one that's 2,000 miles away instead of the one that's 2 miles away. So to fix that, we'll click the I said 2 waypoint directly after the runway. Insert next waypoint. We're going to enter Barkway and we'll be presented with two options to select. We want the one that's nine miles away, not the one that's 2,000 miles away. So we'll click the correct one, insert temporary. Now we've got to clear out the incorrect waypoints that were inserted automatically. So those are the waypoints Barkway 3. We'll click on it, hit delete, hit insert temporary. Barkway 07, click on it, hit delete, insert temporary. We can now clear out the discontinuity click on the discontinuity, hit delete, insert temporary, and that's now fixed that small bug in the departure planning. Once you leave the runway, the airplane will fly direct to the correct Barkway waypoint. With our flight plan inserted, it's now time to sort out the takeoff performance. So on the FMC, we'll head over to the perf page. We need to grab our V speeds from the EFB. To do that, we'll head over to the EFB and we're going to click on takeoff performance. We'll click sync FMS on the departure section. This will insert our departure runway. We'll also hit sync on the condition section. That will sync for live weather from the simulator. We can now hit compute to get our V speeds and we'll click send to FMS. To commit our V-speeds into the FMC, we'll just click the Confirm Takeoff Speeds button and that inserts our V-speeds. So now let's head up to the Autopilot panel. First of all, we're going to insert our cruising altitude into the Autopilot panel, that's 26,000. 
I'm also going to clear out some items on the takeoff checklist here. So all we should have to address is the auto brake. We're going to click auto brake on the bulkhead. We will also need to correctly set our takeoff trim. So you can see here, it's got a red error message just below the PFD. To change takeoff trim on the pedestal, where my mouse is, there is a slightly awkward click spot. Essentially, you want to click the up and down arrows until the number on the left matches the pink number on the right. I've shown some labels up for where you should click and where you should check that the numbers match. With that done, we will check our takeoff config. So on the pedestal, click the takeoff config. And the display that says takeoff config should now switch to normal. Returning to the autopilot panel, we'll now activate the flight director and this will put the airplane into manage mode ready for departure. We're now ready to go. So let's take the parking brake off and we will move the throttles to the flex detent as shown here. So once the throttles are in flex, on the PFD, you'll see flex displayed above the speed tape and the airplane will start its takeoff roll. We will rotate at our rotate speed. We'll follow that flight director, bring the landing gear up once we have positive rate and activate the autopilot. Very shortly, you'll see flashing text above the speed tape that says leave a climb. At this point, you'll want to move the throttle to the climb detent as shown here. Returning to the PFD, you see that annunciator now changes to throttle climb. As the airplane accelerates, we'll want to retract the flaps. So as you pass those orange markers on the PFD speed tape, you will want to retract the flaps. We're at flaps one, so we retract the flaps to clean once we pass the marker. The airplane will now follow your lateral flight plan and follow its vertical flight path to your cruising altitude. It's possible at some point during your climb you'll see altitude constraint displayed on the PFD and the airplane will briefly level off. This is normal, it's because the airplane's obeying an altitude constraint in its managed climb path. As soon as the airplane has passed that constraint it will automatically resume its climb so you don't need to do anything. As you pass transition altitude in your country, the Q&H display will start to flash. At this point, push in the barometric pressure knob and that will set the pressure to standard. Top of climb is marked on the navigation display by a white up arrow. Once the airplane passes this arrow and reaches its cruise altitude, it will start to level off and you'll then see an altitude cruise annunciator appear on the PFD. So while we are at cruise, we can start to prepare for our descent and approach. First of all, we're going to head over to the NAVAID page in the FMC. Just check that our ILS frequency has been pre-populated, which it will have been provided you've selected an arrival runway in the FMC. Additionally, we're also going to dial in our bottom of descent altitude, ready for our managed descent later on. As a simplification, I recommend you set the altitude to 2,000 feet above the elevation of your destination runway. If we now switch the FMC over to the perf page, we'll notice that the airplane has pre-populated our approach speeds. That's 136 knots. This is just for information. You don't need to do anything. The airplane will automatically decelerate to that approach speed once it's flown the diesel program closer to the destination airport. Another small task to take care of. I'm going to arm the auto brakes by pressing the auto brake button on the bulkhead. Top of descent will be signified by a white down arrow on the navigation display. When the airplane passes that point, that arrow, on the autopilot panel, we're going to push in the altitude dial and that will put the airplane into a managed descent mode. The first event you'll see during descent 
As you pass this solid pink dot on the navigation display, the airplane will briefly level off at 10,000 feet to decelerate to 250 knots. Once it's reached that airspeed, it will resume its managed descent. The next event, you'll see the pressure display flash again as you pass back through transition altitude. Pull out that dial and on PC, press B to set local pressure. On Xbox, in the Sims control options, you'll want to map set altimeter to a spare button. The next few events of deceleration, bottom of descent and approach happen in very quick succession. So I'll talk you through it as it happens here. So at bottom of descent, you'll see altitude constraint appear on the PFD and the airplane will start to level off. Deceleration is marked by a pink circle on the navigation display. We've just passed that, so we're going to start applying flaps. Now as the airplane decelerates past those orange flap markers, you will apply more and more flaps until you're at full flaps configured for approach. As you are applying flaps and as the airplane is decelerating, you'll probably be making your final turn towards the runway as well. So at this point you can activate approach and the landing system display. And you can see here we are continuing to apply flaps as the airplane decelerates. We've just passed another orange flap marker. We'll also now see the localizer enunciator appear on the PFD. So the plane has picked up the localizer at our destination. And we've just passed that final orange flap marker. So I'll apply full flaps, drop the gear, and the airplane will reach its final approach speed very shortly. Shortly afterwards, the airplane will intercept the glide slope. You'll see the glide slope enunciator appear. At this point, if you want the airplane to auto land, we will activate autopilot 2. All that remains is the landing itself. So if you've activated autopilot 2 and you're going for an auto land at 400 feet, you will see a land enunciator appear on the PFD. Of course, if you want to land the airplane manually, you can just disengage the autopilot and do so. Just before touchdown, in auto land mode, the airplane will start to flare. In any mode, you'll hear a Retard. call out. At this point, you should idle the throttle. In manual or auto land, the airplane will apply auto brakes to slow you down. You can use reverses if required. If you are in auto land mode, the airplane will also handle the lateral rollout. And that concludes our flight tutorial for the Inibuilds A350. I hope you found this useful. If you did, please drop a like. Feel free to subscribe for regular sim content. If the cold and dark tutorial is complete by the time you see this, I will link to it in both the pinned comment and put an end card up here. If it's not up yet, just keep an eye out on the channel and subscribe with the notifications turned on. I'll also probably do a cabin tour at some point, so feel free to subscribe for that as well. Take care, and I'll see you next time.